This is where it got to the West, said actor John Wayne, the main character of John Ford's stagecoach, which made this place famous all over the world when he first saw the sign. Monument Valley, a valley that has been an icon of the southwestern United States since the 1940s, is a desert landscape with red sandstone formations, slender rock towers and massive peaks, sculpted by millions of years of water and wind activity. The day before, we had already experienced how beautiful this type of landscape can become when it is illuminated by the rays of the sun just above the horizon, which you can see in the episode 1 from this trip. So we wanted to be in the valley just before the sunrise. As we spent the night in Mexican Head, we had about 25 miles to cover to reach the spawn. Sunrise was at 7.30, so we decided to leave around 6.15 a.m. Initially, we planned to be on the Indian Road at sunrise, but as the park opens at 8 a.m., we welcome the first rays of the sun by stopping at Highway 163. The morning was decidedly cool and slightly cloudy. It seemed that this time we would not be able to see the landscape colored by the rays of the rising sun, but they found a way to break through the delicate steam about us and for a short moment set the surrounding rocks red, and I managed to capture the moment of dead barst on this hyperlapse. Although much can be appreciated from the main road, a lot more of the landscape is hidden from the view behind the formations called Saddleback, King on his Throne, Stagecoach and Bear and Rabbit. From the visitor center at Lookout Point, there are good views across three of the valley's most photographed peaks, but most of the Navajo Tribal Park can only be seen from the Valley Drive, a 17-mile dirt road that loops through the park. Starts at the visitor center and heads southwest among the towering cliffs and masses, shrubs and trees and wind blow sand, all comprising the magnificent colors of the valley. The road is dusty, steep in a couple of places and rather uneven, but does not need four-wheel drive. The journey is suitable for the majority of family cars and small to medium-sized RVs. Valley Drive passes 11 numbered stops at the most scenic places, and the typical journey around the loop takes at least two hours. You are not allowed to hike away from the road closer towards any of the formations, but even so, the trip is very enjoyable. Before human existence, the park was once a lowland basin. For hundreds of millions of years, materials that eroded from the early rock mountains deposited layer upon layer of sediment which cemented a slow and gentle uplift, generated by ceaseless pressure from below the surface, elevating this horizontal strata quite uniformly, one to three miles above the sea level. What was once a basin became a plateau. Natural forces of wind and water that eroded the land spent the last 50 million years cutting into and peeling away at the surface of the plateau. The simple wearing down of altering layers of soft and hard rock slowly revealed the natural wonders of Monument Valley today. We left this place definitely insatiable and wanting to explore deeper. It would be best if we could take a prowler here, but we had to move on. Such so as the final close-up look at some details of the surroundings and off to the next place on our list. Two other attractions of Northern Arizona are located very close to Page Town. The first one, among the shell and sand rocks that make up the Colorado Plateau, is Horseshoe Band. Approaching towards the canyon, nothing indicates that in a moment we will see another wonder of nature. Standing on the edge of the cliff, we 
which is barrier-free on either side of the overlook. We have a panorama of the canyon in front of us with a beautifully carling Colorado River flowing from Lake Powell straight to the Colorado Canyon. It bends more than 300 meters below in the picturesque Glen Canyon, creating a unique horseshoe shape. Using TPE app on my phone, I managed to pick precisely a location that allowed me to capture in this short hyperlapse the setting sun directly above this most photographed site in northern Arizona. Antelope Canyon provides completely different views. Created by millions of years of erosion, there is a canyon that got its name from the belief that antelopes once grazed along it in the winter. Again, from the outside, it doesn't look like much, but once you're inside, it's a different story. It is made up of two magnificent slot canyons that lie on the land belonging to the Navajo Nation, and is a sacred site of the Navajo people, as well as the Navajo Tribal Park that can be accessed by permit and with the Navajo Guide only. We have visited lower canyon called by the Navajo people Spiral Rock Arches. It is shaped like a V with a narrow pathway that opens up to the sky, whereas Upper Antelope Canyon is shaped like an A with a wider pathway that narrows as you approach the top of the canyon. Red and orange striped walls undulate from wide to narrow spaces. Natural beams of light pierce the ground from crevices above. Layers, patterns and shadows shift as the sun moves across the sky. This magnificent 8 to 60 million year old slot canyons form when rock is eroded periodically by water in very dry areas like deserts. Antelope Canyon formed when periodic rains carved into the Navajo sandstone that was formed around 199 to 174 million years ago. It was called Aeolian deposition. Since that time, iron oxides have been deposited on some of the sand grains in varying amounts, giving the slot canyon layer after layer of every shade of red. The canyon's formation is a long process and is possible thanks to rifts. The rock that is created thanks to the consecutive layers of sand and water is pretty solid. However, it is not perfectly homogeneous. Some microscopic rifts are already existing inside the sandstone. This is where rifts form. Water infiltrates in those microscopic rifts, enlarging them slowly but surely. Then, thanks to the work of the time, larger rifts appear. At that point, when a flash flood happens, the rift is too fragile and cannot support the weight of water falling harshly on it. The sandstone breaks and creates the canyon. Flash floods don't happen often in the desert, but they do happen. Before you go, be sure to check the weather forecast. Pay particular attention to the weather several miles above the canyon. A number of people have died when water came rushing down the canyon after a hard rain. As you can imagine, there is no place to hide in such place. As the Antelope Canyon is one of the most photographed places on Earth, I shot few photos myself as well. It's not easy to have perfect conditions for shooting, as the reservations are often made several months in advance, especially during peak season and holidays so you don't know what kind of weather you're going to get. Perfect conditions are clear sky and sun just about the canyon, but even without them, you can capture fantastic colors, unique textures and shapes of this wonder of nature. Last day of this trip, we plan to visit the Grand Canyon and Meteor Crater near Winslow. When you approach Grand Canyon from the east, turning from US 89 to AZ 64, you drive right past a long, narrow and deep gorge, which is one of the largest tributaries of the Grand Canyon. 
seems like it is skipped by most just because it is 10 miles from the largest canyon in the world, but it is truly incredible and would be main attraction anywhere but here, where it is a sideshow. It is incredible to see how the canyon is cut through the plateau as a gap in the otherwise rolling plain. The upper end is viewable from two overlooks along the AZ-64, the section between Cameron and the edge of the Coconino Plateau. Here, the canyon is around 1800 feet deep and 1800 feet wide. The more spectacular lower gorge is much harder to reach, requiring long drive across unpaved roads in the Navajo Reservation, followed by the difficult hike. Probably nothing for a prowler, but we didn't want to risk driving there with rented convertible. The narrow gorge was created by the Little Colorado River. It drops thousands of feet cutting a narrow gorge through the Bright Angel Shale, Moab Limestone, and tapit sandstone rock layers. One thing that makes the Little Colorado River unique is that during the warmer months, the minerals present in the waters create a very intense blue turquoise color, while during the rest of the year, the color becomes dark brown like here, or even remains almost completely dry. There are places where you can turn off the new road onto the old Highway 64. You will practically be alone here and it truly is kind of a traveling time experience. On such abandoned grade of State Road 64, 140 meters south upstream from the current SR 64th roadway, there is 92 meters long made up of riveted steel deck trusses supported by steel piers. Now abandoned but in pristine condition, a Warner Trust type bridge built in 1933, when Arizona Highway Department and US Bureau of Public Roads undertook an extensive road building effort to provide automobile access from the east to Grand Canyon's National Park's South Rim. The place we explored more was called Dead Indian Canyon. It's a valley that has an elevation of almost 1500 meters. I haven't found any information or even a piece of a legend about where this valley got its name from, but you can probably guess. Grand Canyon there's probably no one who has not heard of it. And we all heard how magnificent it was. But the truth is, you need to experience it for yourself to know what it really means. The foundations are laid almost two billion years ago. Two plates of Earth's crust colliding and rows of volcanic islands smash and merge creating the dark colors of canyon's bottom rocks. Of course, the canyon itself is much younger, but still, sitting there, is to behold an awesomeness immensity of time. The South Rim, which is the most popular visitor area and which we have visited, is open all year weather permitting. The North Rim is generally open mid-May to mid-October. Find a bit more time and have a walk along the rim instead of just hopping out on one of the viewpoints along Desert View Drive for a quick photo in the crowd. Finding a place away from tourists is possible and crucial to really embrace of what took Mother Nature millions and millions of years to create and why it has earned the distinction as one of the world's seven wonders. Some say visiting Grand Canyon is life-changing experience. Well, definitely, I have felt ancestral energy that helped me to reach the last attraction on our list.
And that's how this five days trip ends. There was two and a half pleasant highway drive to the last attraction close to Winslow. Not much to admire around except emptiness of the desert views. But good mood, good music, good company and good weather all made this trip very enjoyable. Beringer Meteor Crater is quite unexpectedly private. It all started when Demoro Beringer learned of the Arizona Crater in 1902. Fascinated by the presence of meteorites around the hole, he suspected that the crater had been made by the meteor hitting the Earth, a theory that at the time had been disproved by the leading geologist. He also saw mining potential of nickel iron meteorites and applied for a mining patent. He was granted the title to two square miles that included the crater. This place is unlike any other spot on Earth. The crater's rim rises 45 meters above the surrounding desert plain. Perched at an elevation of 1740 meters above sea level, the impact scar stretches 1200 meters across and the floor is 170 meters deep. By the time of his death in 1929, Dee Moreau and his business partner spent more than $600,000 exploring the crater. But unfortunately, it proved not to be the gold mine, and he was practically broke when he died. Today, the primary purpose of the Beringen Crater Company is to preserve this best-preserved impact crater on Earth formed 50,000 years ago as a memorial to De Moreau pioneering scientific work. During my next trip to Vegas, I rented a jeep and headed north to Death Valley up to Mono Lake. Join me on this journey in the following episodes.